In this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to NumPy, which is an extremely popular and widely used Python module for doing all kinds of numerical calculations, but especially for doing numerical linear algebra. I've put a link to their website in the online version of these slides because you can find there a lot of examples of what NumPy is used for, as well as the full documentation for the hundreds and hundreds of functions which NumPy provides. And you will see there that it's really true what they say, that almost anybody who does any kind of mathematical or scientific research using Python will be using NumPy in one way or another. So it's a very valuable thing to learn how to use. Now for us, the most important object the NumPy provides is the NumPy array. An array can represent things like a list, or a two-dimensional matrix or vector, or even higher order analogs of those things. And there are a lot of built-in functions for doing linear algebra with these NumPy arrays, which we're going to see at least some of in this video. So let's begin by importing NumPy so that we can use it. In CoCalc, NumPy is installed for you, and you can import it by using import NumPy. Most people do that with import NumPy as NP, so that's what I'll do here. Now, a NumPy array, as I mentioned, is a rectangular grid, which can be one-dimensional or two-dimensional or three-dimensional and so on. And a NumPy array of shape, n1, n2, n3, and so on, is an n1 by n2 by n3 and so on grid of Python objects, so usually for us, numbers. You can create an array using the np.array function, and then you can get the shape of your array by using the array.shape notation. The input you have to give to the np.array function is a list of the rows of your array. So let's see how to do this. We're going to make a one-dimensional array. So a one-dimensional array will just have it, the input to the np.array function being a single list of numbers here. So we'll make a one-dimensional array containing the two numbers 1, 2. And you can see that when I do this and then ask for x.shape, it'll give me a tuple of size 1. So this notation means a tuple of size 1 containing the number 2. So my array is a one-dimensional array because the tuple has size 1 and the length of that array is 2. So let's make some two-dimensional arrays now. And you'll remember from Algebra 1 that what we decided to do was represent row vectors as, for example, 1 by 2 or 1 by 3 or 1 by whatever matrices and column vectors as m by 1 uh, matrices. So here, our row vectors like v equals 2, 3 are going to be represented by um, 1 by n NumPy arrays. So to create the row vector I've written there, we will use the np.array function and the input to the MP array function will be a list of the rows in my row vector. So it has to be a list containing a list containing 2 and 3. So when you do this uh, and you ask for the shape, then what you'll get back is 1, 2. So that means that your row vector really has been input here as a 1 by 2 array. On the other hand, if you want a column vector, like this column vector of height 2, then you represent that as a 2 by 1 NumPy array. And to create it, you need to use the array function and give it a list containing the rows of this column vector. So the first row just has 1 and the second row is 2. So the input to NumPy array will be a list which had two elements. And the first element would be the list representing the first row. And the second element will be the list representing the second row. So when we do this, the shape will be 2, 1. So we've successfully made a 2 by 1 NumPy array to represent our 2 by 1 column vector. Let's now make a 2 by 2 matrix. Of course, this is going to be a 2 by 2 NumPy array. So we're going to make the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, the way we do it is by using the NP array function. And the input to that has to be a list whose elements are lists representing the rows of our matrix. So we should give it a list whose first element is the list 1, 2, representing the first row, and whose second element here is the list 3, 4, representing the second row. So when we do this, the shape of A becomes 2 by 2, so that we've made a 2 by 2 matrix represented by a 2 by 2 NumPy array. So what if we want to get some of the elements from our NumPy arrays? So I've got this matrix with the entries 1, 2 in the first row and 3, 4 in the second row. How can I get 3 back or 4 back or 1 back? Well, we can do this using syntax which is very similar to the way we accessed elements of Python lists. So we use square brackets. If you've got a two-dimensional array called A, 
then you can access the, element, the entry in row i and column j by using this notation here. So a square brackets i colon j. Or if you prefer, a square brackets i square brackets j. So a square brackets i will give you the ith row. And then if you do square brackets j to that, you get the jth element in row i. But there is a catch just like for Python lists. So Python lists begin with um, entry 0. And similarly, NumPy arrays start with row 0 and the columns start with column 0. So if you want the top left entry, well actually let's do rows first. So if we want the first, so we want the top row of A, then we get the top row by using A square brackets 0. That will give me the top row, which is a one dimensional array containing 1, 2 as you can see when I ask for a square bracket zero. If, on the other hand, I want the top right entry of my matrix, which was one, two on the first row and three, four, then I should do a square brackets zero comma one, or a square brackets zero square brackets one. That will give me the entry in row zero and column one, which is a two, as we can see there. All right, so you have to be a bit careful then with uh, row vectors because and column vectors because we represented our row and column vectors as 1 by n or n by 1 arrays. So you have to give two coordinates if you want to get the numbers, which are entries in those vectors. So here I've got um, a thing called w. w is a 2 by 1 column vector. So if I just ask for w square bracket 0, I'm not going to get a number. I will get a one-dimensional array representing the first row. So it'll be a one-dimensional array just containing the number 1. If we want actually the numbers which are inside w, we've got to specify row and column. We've got to give two coordinates. So w1, 0 will give me the entry in row 1 and column 0. So what's that? Think before I run this cell. The answer is 2, of course, right? Remember, rows start with row 0 and then go to row 1. So row 1 contains the entry 2. So we have to do w10 to get the entry 2 from w. Now, the people who write, who developed NumPy arrays, overrode the underscore underscore eq underscore underscore function, just like we did in our last video about classes. But they perhaps didn't do it in quite the way that you might expect. In particular, you can't use equal sign equal sign to check if two arrays are equal. So let's see what happens when you use equals equals on two NumPy arrays. Here I've got a NumPy array A, which is a one-dimensional array containing the numbers 1, 2, 3, and B, and a one-dimensional array containing 3, 2, 1. And if I do A equals equals B, I don't get true or false. What I get instead is an array containing false, true, false. And that's telling you that the um, zeroth entries of A and B are not equal, the first entries are equal, and the second entries are not equal. So the entries at index 0 are not equal, the entries at index 1 are equal, that's why we've got a true in the middle, and the entries at index 2 are not equal, that's why we've got a false at the end. So if you do want to check whether two NumPy arrays are equal, you need to use a special function called np.array underscore equal. So that really will give you a true or false answer according to whether A and B are equal. So this will be false, of course, because they're not equal. But on the other hand, if we ask whether A is equal to A, then we'll get the answer true. NumPy have also implemented addition and scalar multiplication, which works exactly like vector or matrix addition and scalar multiplication. So if you have two arrays of the same size, like here I have two 2 by 1 column vectors represented as NumPy arrays, then I can just add them like vectors. So I'm adding the vector 1, 2 to the vector 3, 4, and of course I should, should get the vector 4, 6, and that is exactly what I get. And it even prints it out to me in a way that makes it clear that what we've got there is a height 2 column vector. You can also do scalar multiplication in the obvious way. So just do the number that you want to scale and multiply by, then the multiplication symbol, the asterisk, and then your NumPy array, and that will do scalar multiplication. So here I've got x, which is a NumPy array, a one-dimensional array containing 1 and 1. And if I do 2 times x, I'll just get the one-dimensional array containing 2 and 2. There we go. So addition and scalar multiplication just work in the easy, the natural way that you expect them to work. 
So here's another example. I've got a height three column vector y containing the entries one, two, three. And if I do either minus y or minus one times y, all that will do will scale and multiply y by minus one. So I'll get the array with entries minus one, minus two, and minus three. Oops, let's just run that so you can see that it really does happen. Yes, it does. Okay, we can also do matrix multiplication in NumPy. Again, this has been built in for us and it uses the symbol, the at symbol here. So this symbol right here does matrix multiplication. If you do two dimensional array multiplications, then you've got to obey the matrix multipl multiplication rules. So if you're multiplying together two arrays, A and B, then the number of columns in A must be the same as the number of rows in B. So the usual matrix multiplication rule. In other words, if you're wanting to multiply together an M by N array and a P by Q array, then you've got to have N equals P. So let's see some examples of that. Now remember W was a two by one column vector and A was a two by two matrix. So A times W makes sense as a matrix multiplication and the answer will be a two by one column vector again. Let's just see this and yeah, okay, it worked. We got another two by one column vector. Uh, v was a one by two row vector. A was a two by two matrix. So that is a legitimate matrix multiplication and the result will be another one by two row vector. And when I run it, yeah, we can see we do get another one by two row vector. Finally, we can do a dot product or almost a dot product. So we're going to multiply a one by two row vector with a two by one column vector. So the result should be a one by one vector. And yeah, that is what we get, a one by one two dimensional array containing the number eight. Okay, finally, let's do something that's not allowed. So A is a two by two matrix and V is a one by two row vector. So this matrix product should not be allowed. It doesn't make sense according to the rules of matrix multiplication. So when I run it, you can see I get a big uh, complicated error message, but you can sort of work out what's going on there. So input operand one has a mismatch in its core dimension. Okay, there's a load of confusing stuff there, but it's clear that what it's telling you is you've got the dimensions wrong. You've got the sizes of your matrices wrong. And that's because you can't multiply a two by two matrix into a one by two column vector. It doesn't obey the matrix multiplication rules. So let's do some linear algebra now. We've got all these matrices and column vectors. Let's do a few bits of linear algebra in NumPy. We can create identity matrices. And the function to make an identity matrix is called I, E, Y, E. Um, that's a pretty silly name, but the people who made NumPy wanted to match the names of their functions to the names of the functions in another famous linear algebra package to make it easier for people to transfer from this, this very common, uh, widely used other package. So they've copied some names which might seem a bit silly, like np.i to be an uh, identity matrix. But if you do this, you'll get the 3 by 3 identity. You can see that really is what you get. And if you want to make arrays of zeros, like a zero vector or a zero matrix, you can use the function np.zeros, so it's spelled Z-E-R-O-S. So when I do np.zeros and the input to that function is the tuple containing 2, 2, that will give me a 2 by 2 zero matrix. So when I run this, I'll get the 2 by 2 ma zero matrix. Now a common mistake here is to forget that the input to the np0 functions function must be a tuple. So I've got two sets of brackets there because the input to my function is the tuple containing two and two. Right, if you don't do that, if you try to do just np zeros two comma two, you'll get an error. So you have to give np zeros a tuple telling you the, telling it the size of the array of zeros that you want to make. So let's do np zeros four. Well, that, what that will give you actually is a um, one dimensional array of zeros. So you get zero, 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 zero. And that's the same as giving it, giving np zeros the input, which is the one tuple containing just four. Okay, um, again, here is a thing which is important to be aware of because it's a way in which NumPy might not expect behave exactly how you expect. You know how to work out powers of numbers in Python. So like if you wanted two to the power four, you do two asterisk asterisk four. But if you want to work out a matrix power, you can't do that with 
asterisk asterisk so if you have a two by two matrix a for example then a asterisk asterisk two is not the square of the matrix a so let's see what it does do right we're going to make our matrix a be the matrix uh, whose first row is one two and whose second row is three four so the two by two matrix one two three four and if we do a asterisk asterisk two what do i get there well that's certainly not a matrix multiplied by a what asterisk asterisk 2 will do is just square every element of the array. So you must be careful because asterisk asterisk probably doesn't do what you want. If you want to work out matrix powers in uh, NumPy, you need to do it, use a special function, which is np.linalge.matrix underscore power. So if you do np.linalge.matrix underscore power a comma 2, then that will give you the actual matrix product, uh, a, a matrix multiplied by A. So if you check, then that is the correct answer to what you should get when you matrix multiply A by itself. Of course, you can use this if you want to do matrix inverses. So if you've got a matrix, if you've got an invertible matrix, so in particular, it must be a square matrix. So I've created one here, and A is now the array the uh, two by two matrix one two two one then you can get its inverse by using matrix power and the power minus one so here on line two i've created a new numpy array called a underscore inverse and i've defined that to be the matrix power of a to the power minus one so on the third line, I'm going to check. I'm going to do the matrix multiplication, A times A inverse. So remember that this symbol does matrix multiplication. And if this has really worked, I should get the identity matrix. You can see I do get the two by two matrix, two by two identity matrix. So np.linalge.matrixpower A minus one really is giving me A to the power minus one. In other words, the inverse of A. You can also work out determinants and eigenvalues or eigenvectors. Now, I'm not sure if you will have done eigenvalues and eigenvectors in Algebra 2 yet, uh, but if you haven't, then you can just come back to this section of the video once you've, uh, once you've done that. Uh, equally, I'm not sure if you've done determinants yet, but again, you've probably all seen a 2 by 2 determinant before, and I'm going to show you how to work those out in, um, in NumPy. So A, remember, is a 2x2 two two NumPy array. It was the 2x2 two two array whose first row was 1, 2, and whose second row was 2, 1. So its determinant should be 1 times 1 minus 2 times 2, which is minus 3. And you can compute the uh, determinant in NumPy using np.linalge.det, D-E-T. So when I run it, well, NumPy will use some kind of strange algorithm to compute the determinant, so it won't necessarily give you exactly the correct answer, but it'll give you an approximation, a decimal approximation to the correct answer, which is minus 3, and you can see that we've pretty much got minus 3 there. Okay, so it will also do eigenvectors. Um, if you have, so I have here A, the NumPy array, which is again a 2x2 two two matrix, which is 1, 1, 1, 1, and I've defined a variable whose call whose name is E, and I've defined it to be np.linalge.eig of A, that's short for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So what E will be is um, something which contains the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So E will be an array, E square brackets 0 will contain the eigenvalues, and E square brackets 1 will contain the eigenvectors. So the E square brackets 1 will be a two-dimensional array whose columns are the eigenvectors of A. So let's do this. Okay, so the first thing we got E0 was the eigenvalues, and those are 2 and 0. And the second thing we got is a two-dimensional array whose columns are the eigenvectors of the matrix A. So those things might look a bit weird. What happens is NumPy scales those eigenvectors so that they've got length 1. Okay, so let's look at something which is not um, linear algebra related, but it's another useful function which is defined by NumPy and which we're going to want later. That function is called linspace, and it does something which we actually can do in ordinary Python, but NumPy lets us do in a slightly more convenient way. So if you want n equally spaced numbers, beginning with a particular number and ending with another number, that's what np.linspace gives you. So the command np.linspace start, stop, and then a number n will produce a one-dimensional array consisting of n equally spaced points beginning with start and ending with stop. 
So for example, if you did np.lin space 0, 1, 11, that will give you 11 equally spaced points beginning at 0 and ending at 1. And those things will be in a one-dimensional NumPy array. So they'll be 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 0 0.9, and then 1. So when I run this, you can see that really is what I get. And we'll just check the shape. So if we check the shape, then that will be a one-dimensional array. So the shape will be a tuple of size 1, and it's got 11 things in it. So the entry in that tuple is 11. Now, one of the reasons that these lin space one-dimensional arrays will be useful is because we're going to use them for getting x-coordinates and y-coordinates when we're plotting graphs, as we're going to do in the next video. And one of the reasons that, that um, NumPy arrays are so useful for this is that you can use them in loops and you can use them to do list comprehensions. So let's say, for example, we want to use a, a NumPy array in a, uh, in a for loop. So it's perfectly okay to do 4x in a NumPy array. And then in my for loop here, I'm just printing out the things which are in this array. So my NumPy array is going to be created by NumPy.linspace. So that's going to give me, with those arguments, five equally spaced points beginning at zero and ending at one. So when I print them out, I just get zero, uh, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and one. So five equally spaced points beginning with zero and ending at one. Okay, so here's an example of some uh, list comprehensions. I've done a list comprehension. Uh, now we're going to do y, uh, we're going to create a list of called y's, ys, and it's going to be a list consisting of the thing x squared for each element x of numpy lin space 0, 1, um, 5. So it'll be the squares of all of the numbers which I've just printed out on the screen above. So there they are, there are those screens. So this would be super useful for us because, for example, if we wanted to plot a graph of a function, then we might want to make a load of x, y coordinates and plot those points and then just join them up with a straight line. That would give us a good graphical approximation to a continuous function. So you could use linspace to generate your x coordinates equally spaced between whatever range you want to uh, plot your function over. And then you could use a list comprehension like we've just done here to get your y coordinates of your, um, of, of your, of the points on your, your graph of your function.